This video is going to be a bit of a doozy. We're going to be going through the full migration process from Salesforce CRM into Zoho CRM. So that's going to cover actually exporting the data from Salesforce. We're going to take a look at those files together because there's actually a couple little tips that I'm going to show you to make sure that you can pull over things like files and attachments. And then we're actually gonna run that full import process into Zoho CRM and take a look at the data that comes out. So before I jump in, I do wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave any questions, feedback, video requests in the comments section. And if you do find that you need a little bit of help with your Zoho install or potentially migration, just head on over to zanata.com Click on book a meeting and we'll be chatting about how we can help in no time. With that, let's jump right on in. So I've got my little Salesforce instance here. I'm on a trial. I uh, spun this up just for the purposes of this video. Um, what we'll see here is that I've added a account, contact and deal. So all of them are called migration and then demo account, demo contact and demo opportunity. Each one of them has an attachment or as they call it in Salesforce, a file. I'm specifically including these files because this is where a lot of people get tripped up on the migrations. Again, there's a little cheat code I'm going to show you when we get into the data section in the middle here that's going to allow you to actually get these files over as attachments. Um, but so we'll see the account has a file attached. If we jump into the contact, they've got some basic information and then they've got a file of a different format. And then last but not least, we have our opportunity. Um, which of course has its core information and a file attached to it as well. Given that structure, we've got our account, we've got our contact, we've got our opportunity. How do we actually go about pulling an export out of Salesforce? So what we're gonna wanna do is come up into the top right into this little settings wheel up here, this little quick settings guy. Then we'll open the advanced setup. Here over on the left, we'll go into the administration and then into the data section and we'll open up data export. So this is essentially the big export tool that is included with Salesforce. If you have a like Brave browser or an ad blocker, you might get this little warning. Just click on view in classic. It's the same page. I'll turn my dark mode off for the non dark mode users here. And so now I'm on my export page. There's two options. I can export now or I can export in the future. I've already run one export so I can prep for this video. You can run one of these every seven days. So it's not going to let me export now. I'm just going to schedule an export so that you can see these steps. So our file encoding, we're going to leave that exactly as is. Now here is where you get tripped up. So if you're moving into Zoho CRM, you're going to think, hey, I need attachments, right? I want to grab attachments out of Salesforce and bring them into CRM because that's what they're going to call them on the CRM side. Important to note, in Salesforce, there's two different versions of how an attachment can be stored. So the older instances of Salesforce are going to store them as attachments. The newer instances are going to sort store them as files. I recommend you check both boxes just to be safe. It's very likely though that all of your files and attachments are in one or the other. Most of you, it's gonna be the files section. And this is actually where when we get into the import into Zoho where things can go wrong. Again, I have a fix for it and I'll show you that. Down here, we can choose just like, when do we want this to run? No big deal. And down at the bottom, we can determine what data we want to include with this. So a lot of the times I'm a mega nerd, I go in, I just get everything, right? If you knew, hey, I only really use a couple of these, right? I might come in and just grab contact, account, maybe opportunity or deal, right? And I can search here to make sure that we grab just the right stuff. Um, the one thing that is important here is that when you're using the CRM migration tool, you can get a lot of historical data. So things like opportunity history and stuff, you may want to consider bringing in um, again, I've already grabbed a backup from our system, so we're going to use that for the purposes of this video. Um, but one thing to note, when these come out, they're going to have these big, long system names. I oftentimes rename it once I download it just to make sure that uh, it's easy to find. But just like that, you're actually basically going to be done pulling the data out of Salesforce. So again, big picture thing here, go into your data export make sure to include both of these checkboxes just to be safe and then scroll down to the bottom and pick the appropriate modules. I always just grab all of them. In some cases, it might be easier just to grab the ones that you know you're actually using. 
that's what a lot of people are going to do. But I just always grab everything that I can when I do a backup. So with that, once you have your backup downloaded, you're ready to move into part two, which is going to be prepping the data and reviewing it to get it ready for migration. All right. And so with that zip file in hand, we're now ready to jump into our data preparation. So I have my demo export here. This is a big old zip file that contains a CSV for every single module inside of Salesforce. It also contains this magical little folder called content version. Again, this is a place where people get tripped up. You're oftentimes going to think that you need to look for attachments inside of your Salesforce data, because again, that's kind of what it's going to be called in Zoho. That's how we think about it inside of most applications. But the trick is it's going to save those files into the content versions data. And so most people, again, because you're very likely on an, an edition of Salesforce that uses files, this is really what you want. So I'm going to grab this content version folder and I'm going to grab my content version CSV and I'm going to bring those out onto my desktop. Let's take a quick look at the CSV because there's a couple important things I want to highlight. So one, there are two kind of names that we can use in here. One of them is title. One of them is called path on clients. We're going to use path on client. Um, Zoho CRM really prefers when you include these little um, uh, data types inside of the name. So like .pdf, .png. So we're going to use this path on client when we run the import. And then secondly, over here on the right, we have this first publish location ID. This is a weirdly named column, but it's very important for our process. What this column is, so if I grab or copy this first value, what this is, is it is the ID of a record in Salesforce where this file is associated. And so this is a really important column because it's going to allow us to link up this attachment with this account. So... Outside of that, I don't need to make any changes to this file other than the name. Um, so when we're running this migration inside of Zoho, you have pre-baked migration tools for some existing applications. Salesforce, of course, is one of those. And the pre-baked migration tool inside of Zoho is prepared to capture a, a set of data from Salesforce, both from attachments and files. The problem is when you import something and call it content version or, you know, the Salesforce files storage, it's going to try to upload it to documents, which is not where we want it, right? This is essentially a deprecated tool inside of Zoho. We really want to make sure that those come in as attachments. So we're going to trick the system, right? We're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to just rename them, right? We're going to call these attachments. And so now it's going to process them into the appropriate place. So we're actually good now on our um, attachments list. So we're just going to compress these up and we'll have a zip here that we'll call attachments. And this is what we're going to essentially use once we're ready to do that import. Now, the other side of the aisle here, I'm going to call a new folder Salesforce CSVs to migrate. And here I'm going to grab my appropriate modules. So uh, my account right? I'm going to drop those in. I'll scroll down and grab my contacts as well. Each of these just being stored in their own CSV. And then I'm also going to grab my opportunities. Now, again, you don't need to export all of your data if you know you're not using it. Kind of makes this part of the process a little bit easier, right? So you've got just a couple less fields and options that you need to, to sift through. Um, but now I essentially have my two types of data prepared. Right. I have my CSVs, which are going to make my records. And then I have my attachments, which are going to serve as my secondary import to bring in the rest of that data. So let's actually do this migration. So I'm going to go in. I'm in my data migration. I chose Salesforce. Right. And I'm going to come into my folders and I'm going to grab these three CSVs and upload them. Now, I like to do this in two steps. So I'm going to do the like rows and columns data first. Then I'm going to bring in that attachment list as kind of an append. So we'll go ahead and go to next. Right now, it's just processing through the data, looking at it, kind of automatically mapping it. Again, like I mentioned, this tool is trained to look for Salesforce data. 
So it's actually going to map a lot of things automatically for us. So here on this page, just as a quick overview, over on the left hand side are all of our files that we've brought in. It's going to show you which ones have been mapped, which ones have not been mapped. Up at the top, we can see all of our Zoho modules or the ones that we've mapped or the ones that we've not mapped at all. You can also create new modules as a part of this process. I normally recommend making all your modules first and then importing. We've got videos on creating custom modules and kind of customizing data fields on the channel that you can check out. Um, but if you like forgot a quick one, you can add it through here. Next, we're gonna go to our next page. And now for each of these modules that we've mapped, we'll have the opportunity to assign the appropriate record uh, data into CRM. So most of these, I'm just gonna leave. Don't change ID, leave this exactly as is. You need it like this if you're going to appropriately bring in the attachments. Then we'll look at the record name, the type, the street, the city, et cetera, et cetera. We'll kind of go through and make sure all of our fields are mapped. For some of these ones, you're gonna need to pick like number formatting and things like that. So I'm just kind of clicking through those. If you have a ton of custom fields inside of Salesforce that you need to bring over, keep in mind, we can just map all of these. Basically, you've got your field on the file on the left. And then on the right, I can map that to whichever field inside of CRM would be appropriate, just based on what that data is. If you're doing the import process and you realize, oh, shoot, you know what? I don't have a field for this, right? I can come in and actually create a new field on the fly for any of my data that's for coming from Salesforce that maybe I don't have mapped to an appropriate value. Um, one thing I will also highlight that's really nice with using this migration tool is you can actually retain the original creation date and modified dates from that system. So I've been using Salesforce for a long time and you do the migration without using this tool, everything's gonna look like it was created today, even if it was created five years ago. So I really do like that for this reason that you're able to just bring in all of that original metadata and make sure that everything stays super accurate. So I'll go to my next file. Again, all of these, I've just got pretty basic instances. So my fields are essentially mapped. I can just go through each of these. Um, again, just pay close attention at this point when you are doing your migration, just to ensure that if you do have any custom fields, anything like that, that you're not gonna miss them. Um, it's much easier to get it all right the first time than to come back later and redo it. Um, so just double check each of these. I kind of know where everything is gonna land here because my systems are both essentially default, right? Where a lot of that data is just gonna flow over. So now I will start my migration. This is just gonna spin for a moment, so we'll be right back when it's done. All right, migration completed successfully. This is a really useful page. You're able to see how many were added, updated, and skipped. If you do have any that are skipped, you can actually click into this and it will show you why over here on the right. That is supremely useful, so it's like, hey, you had a mandatory field that was empty for 40 of these, right? Then you can download that and re-import it later. But now let's go ahead and just take a quick look at our newly imported data. Here in our accounts, we now see we've got our migration demo account. It's brought in all of that baseline information that we had stored over on Salesforce, again, other than those attachments. So that's gonna be our next step here is how exactly do we get these pesky attachments migrated to CRM? Let's do that now. So I'm gonna jump over back to our settings and we're gonna to go to our import and we're gonna rerun our attachments. So here I'm gonna browse files and I'm going to back myself out back to desktop so I can grab my attachment zip. Here again, make sure that you've renamed everything. We need everything inside this to be called attachments and then we need the zip itself to be called attachments. That's how we trick it. We're basically making sure that instead of going to documents, it's gonna to go to the attachments section. So here, just processing through those. This part can take a little while if you're migrating a lot of files. So like maybe go get that refresh on the coffee, stretch the legs a little bit. Um, it does have to validate, make sure that like no, there's no corrupted data in the, in the images or PDFs or anything like that. So we'll be right back when this is done. Nope, there it is, Never mind. We don't need to jump cut. Um, so here, what we'll see is now I have this attachments list. This is that data that we reviewed. Again, we're going to key in on path on client and first publish location ID. Those are our super important fields here. Now we're going to go to next. And now on this one, you're going to notice I'm going to go a little slower, right? We're going to make sure that we map all this stuff the way that we want it. 
So title here is actually not what we want for file name. So we're gonna unmap title from file name and we're gonna switch that over to path on client. Again, only difference here is that it has .pdf, .png. That just makes our life easier and I'll show you what I mean by that. And then down here below, we're gonna have another value for parent ID. And this is where we need to use that first published location ID, which refers to the Salesforce record ID from that file. Now, really important here because these, they're only going to be associated with that contact account and deal if you've migrated them via this tool. So it's really important that if attachments are relevant for you, you do the entire thing through the migration tool, even if you do it in multiple steps. So now we'll go ahead and click Save and Next and we'll click Start Migration. And then we'll be right back in just a moment when this is completed. All right, and so now we'll see, we've got three attachments that have been added, and let's take a look at how those land inside of our records. So if we jump back into our migration demo account, it's a beautiful thing, there it is. We've got our W9. Um, what you'll notice is this little PDF icon that's only gonna show up if the name contains .pdf. Otherwise, it's going to be like a little blank image and it won't let you do like a preview, right? So I can kind of preview some of this information. Same if I were to go over to my contact, their attachment is a PNG. So you see the little image icon, and then I can preview that here very easily within CRM. If you don't include .png, .pdf, basically it's going to require you to download it. It's not gonna give you that preview, which just is a little bit more annoying. So with that, that is actually it in terms of migrating your data. Obviously, if you have a much more customized Salesforce instance, some of those steps might take you a little longer. There's gonna be more CSVs to go through. But as long as you follow those steps, get all your CSVs organized together, bring all of them in, rename your content version to attachments, zip it up and bring that in, then your migration should go nice and smooth. Really do hope that this video is useful for you. If it was, be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really does help us out. If there's any other tools that you wanna see a migration from, leave those down in the comment section below. We're always happy to help. And because you stuck around to the end of the video, you get to ask for the next applications. And with that, we'll wrap up for today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.